All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next problem we're going to look at is graphing a cyclic function. The cosine function is what I'm going to look at right now. Uh, you can see that I've got y equals 2 cosine 3, x plus pi over 2, plus 2. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we identify everything that's happening in this equation. We had this wonderful mess of the a, h's, and k's that were up here before. A was the stretch factor, h and k was the locator point. And that's pretty much the same idea that we have going on here. It's just a matter of knowing, well, what's the a, what's the h, and what's the k? A is still going to be in the same spot that it always is. This is the stretch factor. Now, in these functions, we called it the amplitude. And what it did is instead of going from negative 1 to positive 1 on the graph, it stretched it out twice as big because it's a 2. So we're going to go from negative 2 to positive 2 for the original part. The h value is always located inside the parentheses. The k value always followed it as far as our horizontal shift left or right and then our vertical shift up and down. The only thing extra that we have is this little 3 that's hanging on in here. And that we're going to call b, which was the period. Now if you remember, and this is kind of the way I tried describing it, from 0 to 2 pi around our unit circle meant we did one lap. That happened and if you remember what the sine, excuse me, what the cosine curve looked like on a regular graph. Started out up here, went down, and then went back up. And that happened from 0 to 2 pi. So there's a definite relationship to the one time around the circle. And then y equals cosine x, where we just go down, up, and then go from up to down to back up. Now, what this 3 does is that it says we've got to do that up-down movement three times over this 0 to 2 pi motion. So one lap around the circle involves us going down, up, down, up, down, up, so that we actually have three of those things happening instead of just one. So let's see if we can't try to get that rough sketch on here fairly well. If I were just looking at y equals cosine 3x, if you plug that into your calculator, you'd see that it would start out here at 1 and go down to negative 1, up, down, up, down, and up, and have three of those periods happen between 0 and 2 pi. Now, the reason why I'm not putting a point down yet is because I do have a little bit of a horizontal shift, pi halves. So instead of me starting out here on the x-axis, I'm going to have to move it. Um, it's a plus pi halves, which means it's a negative movement of that pi half. So this is going to be where I'm going to start that cosine function. Now, keep in mind, I want to go 2 pi from here. So I've got a negative pi half back to 0, positive pi half, pi, 3 pi halves. That's going to be where I want to finish up this curve at, or at least draw the end of what one cycle is going to look like. Again, I'm stretching it from negative 1 to positive 1, we're stretching it out to negative 2 to positive 2. But again, keep in mind, I'm shifting the whole thing up 2 units. So instead of starting out negative 2, we're going to go up 2 units to 0, and at positive 2, go up 2 units for that, so we're going to be at 4. And this is going to be where I kind of put in these dotted lines, so I can see like what some up and down boundaries are going to be, like where I don't want to go any higher and where I don't want to go any lower when I'm actually drawing my curve. So I've got my up-down adjustment made. I've shifted back that value. And remembering cosine starts out on the top, makes its way down, back up, down, back up, so on and so on. But I want to make sure that I finish here. So I'm going to kind of even draw myself a bit of a rectangle to see exactly where this is going to go. And this is going to work too when you plug this into your calculator because you can easily set your x min, x max, y min, and y max to be what I have here in this little rectangle. And in doing so, I can see exactly what the function is supposed to look like, you know, based on what the calculator is going to tell me. So, I've got my h shift, I've got my k shift. I know that it starts out on top for cosine as opposed to starting in the middle. I'm going to kind of give myself, uh, well, I have to break this into thirds because I've got three different rotations happening. So I'm going to kind of give myself a couple of rectangles in here. Makes me see that it's going to come down. Again, touch that lower limit, turn around and go back up top. Hit the top, go down, touch the lower limit, back up top. 
go down, hit the lower limit, and then finish back up top. So I've got one, two, three periods happening in this cycle. So let's go into our calculator. Got the y equals. Now this one's important that you really follow all the parentheses that are going to come along with this. I've got two, I've got cosine, I'm going to put three inside the first parenthesis that they automatically put there, but then I'm going to put a second parenthesis next to it. And there I'm going to put my x plus pi divided by 2. Close that parenthesis, so that's basically sealing off this part of my equation. I'm going to put in a second parenthesis, so that way it closes off the cosine part of it. And then I'm going to stick my plus 2 on the outside of that second closed parenthesis. I'm going to go into my window, said the x min where we want to start this at is going to be negative 2 divided by pi. Excuse me, negative pi divided by 2. x max, that's the reason why I picked the pi divided by 2, the negative, and the x max I want over here at the 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi divided by 2. And I'm going to pick pi fourths for my scale. My y min, we said it was going to be 0, and then the max is going to be positive 4. And we'll do up a scale by 1. Now, the only other thing that I have to worry about is going into my mode and making sure that I'm in radian mode. If I'm not in radian, if it's over here in degree mode, then that's going to make this graph look really funky. Not that it won't look screwy the way it is. But as soon as I hit graph, it should look fairly similar to what we have here on the table. It's up, down, up down for the third and then right back up. So let's see pretty close resemblance between what I've drawn for my curve and what the calculator says for its curve. Uh, I think the only thing that we really didn't talk about in class would be to give ourselves this little box thing in here but uh, after our conics discussion with hyperbolas that should be something you're fairly comfortable with at this point. We'll talk more about this in class. Have a nice evening.